Hello, everybody. Now we're going to talk about the history of solar system science. And we're going to start with uh, the, the ancient Greeks. Um, so astronomy has been done all over the planet by every culture. Everybody has ways of looking at the sky. I'm just going to focus on what the Greeks did, um, but we can talk about other cultures some other time. So I want to start with Eratosthenes. Uh, he managed to measure the size of the Earth. So let's look at how he did that. Okay, so here you can see I have a picture of the Earth. And what Aristosthenes noticed was that on the summer solstice, the sunlight at the midday hit the bottom of a well. And what that means is that it's directly at zenith. It's directly above your head. But on the same day, on the summer solstice in Alexandria, the sun was not directly above the head. It was about seven degrees off. And so you, instead of looking straight up to look at the sun, don't look at the sun. Uh, you'd have to turn your head just a little bit through seven degrees in order to be able to see it. Um, but then what that means is that he knows what the um, angle is between where he was in Syene and being in Alexandria. And so we can use some fairly simple trigonometry to figure out what the distance is. So the distance from um, Syene to Alexandria gives us one side of a triangle and the angle here is seven degrees. So that means that we can work out how far away we are from the Earth's center. So we put all of that in. Um, we know that the, uh, a full circle is 360 degrees and the distance from Syene to Alexandria was only seven degrees. So that's about a 50th of the distance around the Earth. So we need the circumference of the Earth. Uh, the circumference is given by two pi r. Well, now we know we've got 1 50th of it is just the distance from Syene to Alexandria. So if we multiply that distance by 50, now we've got the full circumference. And now we can divide that by 2 pi and get the radius. And it turns out that uh, Aristosthenes' um, estimate was accurate to about 10%. So you know, we were doing astronomy and using the positions of things in the sky to figure out things about the Earth, not just things about the heavens. So Aristosthenes measured the size of the Earth. Um, there were other people around the same time who were talking about the idea that the Earth and the other planets moved around a central fire. So the idea that the sun was in the center, not the Earth. But this didn't really catch on. Um, most, of, most people didn't like this idea. And it was mainly because of um, Aristotle and his idea that the Earth was stationary. Now, a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, Aristotle was supposed to be smart. Why, why did he get this so wrong? He was looking for the evidence and really he did not see any evidence for the Earth's motion. Um, in particular, he said, well, why is there no wind? If the Earth is spinning so fast, why are we not feeling the air move past us? He didn't get that the atmosphere rotates with the Earth. So it's all moving together. Now it turns out that the Earth's rotation does affect the atmosphere. It affects the shape of things like hurricanes, but that's on a really big scale. On a small scale, we don't notice it. Um, he also was like, well, shouldn't we fly off? If you think about it, if you've got a ball and it's covered in water and you, know, you spin it around, you're gonna get lots of water droplets flying off in all directions. And so he was arguing that you know, if the Earth was really spinning, how would we stay on it? Um, he had no concept of gravity. You know, the reason we don't fly off is because gravity is holding us down to the ground, but nobody had come up with the idea of gravity yet. So it wasn't so silly. Uh, but one of the big ones was this idea that there's no parallax shift. So let's talk about what parallax is. Parallax is basically a way of using triangulation to measure distances. So here you can see I've got a tree on the opposite side of a river. I can look at how far away it, I can look at what uh, it, in this direction, so directly across the river, and I can walk somewhere along the bank and look at it from another direction. And as, then I know the angle that I have to look through to see it. So instead of looking straight across the river, I have to look at some angle to be able to see it. And I can measure how far I walked along and by using then trigonometry, so I know this angle and I know this baseline, now I can calculate what this side is, okay? So that's the basic idea of triangulation. Um, and in astronomy, we call that parallax. Um, and you can think of it as being, if you've got a baseline, a big enough baseline, you can see um, things move in space. So if we're looking at say the moon or Venus, 
and we're looking at it from different places on Earth, then we can work out um, how far away it is. So I'd like to do a little experiment and have you hold up your finger in front of your face. And I want you to close one eye and notice which which part of your screen or what to, what's behind it. And then I want you to switch eyes and you'll notice that it's got a different part of the background behind it. Now, if you move your finger further away and do the same thing, you'll see it moves a different amount. And so depending on how far away something is, we'll see a different amount of shift. So in this image, oh, no, nope, let's go back. In this image, we have got um, a picture taken from position A of this object in space, could be the moon. And we're looking at it compared to the background stars that really don't seem to move much. And then we look at it from the other side of the earth and it appears to have shifted. And by measuring that angle of shift, we can then work out, because we know how wide the earth is, remember Aristosthenes figured that out. Uh, now we can figure out how far away this object is. Okay, so you know how, how does this work? Well, we, we have this angular displacement that is um, what you get when you observe something from two widely separated points. The problem is that that angle is very small and at some point it becomes unnoticeable. Um, so, you know, just to put this in perspective, if you are standing on one side of the earth compared to the other, the apparent position of the moon relative to the background stars is only, uh, only different by two degrees. The moon is about half a degree across so it's a really small angle. If we then go to Venus, which is you know, at its closest point, remember Venus is changing its distance to us all the time, but if we get to Venus at its closest point um, and we use the whole of the Earth as our baseline, it's only one arc minute across. Basically, that means that with the naked eye, you would not notice a difference in position. So how do we get a bigger baseline? We need a bigger baseline because even the closest object to us we cannot really detect the difference in position. So we need a really big baseline. Okay, well, we can do that by using the whole of the Earth's orbit. So if you consider here, we've got the Earth uh, in its position in August, and it's looking at something, in this case, the Pleiades, and it's got um, gonna look like it's in this direction. So these are the objects that will be behind it. But when we've moved through six months to the other side of the sun, now in February, we're looking to the Pleiades and we're gonna have a different set of stars behind it. And so now we can measure the distance. Okay, so that's the idea of parallax. So here again, you can see this is kind of showing it a little more um, carefully. I've got, here we are right now and we've got some stars that we can see over here. And we've got this object that's probably a star in front of them. And that star looks like it's in this position. When we move to the other side of the Earth six months later, now as we look in this direction, it's going to look different. It's going to look like it's shifted to this position. So it was here, just basically here, and it's moved. And so we can measure that as an angle, and then we can we know what the diameter of the Earth's orbit is. And so now we've got a triangle, and we can work out how far away it is. Okay, the problem with that is that the nearest star is really long way. So if we consider the sun to be a grapefruit, then the earth is essentially the size of the ball in a ballpoint pen, and it's 50 feet away. So here I've got a graphic, but this isn't to scale. We've got the, the, the earth is a poppy seed, that's right for the size, but it would have to be 50 feet away from this grapefruit, okay? And the next star is a grapefruit that's 2000 miles away. So that angle that, is uh, that we have, the, the shift that you see is so small that we cannot see it naked eye. We need telescopes. We need a way to get better resolution to be able to see smaller shifts. And so while we can measure the distance to stars, we only were able to do it once we had telescopes. And so Aristotle didn't have a telescope. Telescopes went around then. Um, and so when he said he didn't see evidence, people, took that as serious. He had no concept of how far away the stars were. And so in his model, we have the earth in the middle and the moon and the planets and the sun all going around it, all inside a big sphere that has all the stars on it. And this is the, the geocentric model, which we'll get into in another video.